So here we're going to talk about how to make an endergonic reaction occur. And so if you recall, an endergonic reaction is one where the reactants have less energy than the products. So as the reaction occurs, we always go from reactants to products. And so if the reactants, if this is the energy level on the y-axis here, if the reactants have a lower energy level than the products, so here we're at the reactants, here we're at the products, that is an uphill reaction. That is, therefore, an endergonic reaction, meaning it needs energy in order to occur. Right? Remember, exergonic reactions are the ones that give off energy. Endergonic reactions take energy. So even though these endergonic reactions are non-spontaneous, in other words, not favorable, the cell ne still needs to make them happen in many cases so that the cell can live. These are reactions such as linking uh, different amino acids together to make a protein. These are reactions that are part of metabolism, especially creating things the cell needs. So the cell has to make those endergonic reactions occur quite frequently. And there are three, three ways to do this. One is to alter the reactants and products levels. All right? So if we just take a general reaction, A plus B, goes to AB. If this is an unfavorable reaction, it means that the reverse direction is highly favorable. Right? It's actually going backwards. But we know that if we remove some of the reactants, if we lower that, we have just forced the reaction to move forward. We can also do that by increasing a lot of the reactants here. So if we increase the reactants, In meaning the concentration or the amount of reactants we have, or we can decrease the products, the amount of products we have, often by using them up, then that is going to force this unfavorable reaction to move forward in the uh, equilibrium here. Another thing that can be done is you can link the unfavorable reaction in a series of reactions where at least one is highly favorable. And so we talked about this, but if we have a series of reactions, A has to go to B, becomes C, becomes D, becomes E, becomes F, if one of these, let's call it B to C, is highly unfavorable, then that reaction is going to go backwards more than forward. However, if C to D is highly favorable, think about it for a second, any time we make a little bit of C, it automatically becomes D. So we have just lowered the amount of C available. Also, if A to B is highly favorable, any time you have A, it's going to become B, and so we've just increased that. So really, we've done the same thing that we talked about in number one here, we have just increased the reactants, decreased the products, and now this series of reactions will help drive the B to C one, which by itself is unfavorable forward. Essentially, the net sum of all of these, the sum of the reactions has to be favorable. The last one is probably the most common one, but very important, is to link the unfavorable, the endergonic reaction, with a exergonic reaction. And the most common way, basically, is to use ATP, and when ATP is change to AT DP plus PI, this gives off energy. And that exergonic reaction can be used to drive the endergonic reaction forward. And again, the net sum of our two reactions, the endergonic and the exergonic, this sum together has to be negative delta G. Because a negative delta G is spontaneous. Or favorable. 
So uh, by linking our endergonic reaction, the one that takes energy, with an extragonic reaction that gives off energy, as long as the combined delta G there is negative, you can use the exergonic reaction, a la ATP hydrolysis, to power the endergonic reaction forward.